So good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to this exciting my lecture series. And today, on the occasion of World Health, Mental Health Day, uh, as you all know, that this day is observed with the motive of encouraging global mental health education and advocacy against the social stigma that is often associated with it. So I am absolutely delighted to welcome our guest of the day, Yuliana. Basilake, who is a psychologist with Masters in National Security Psychology from Bucharest, Romania, and works with the prison Bucharesti Rahova, Bucharest, where she counsels inmates for social reintegration and for returning to the labor market, in addition to organizing and conducting assessments and group therapy sessions for them. She also has an active interest in research in the area of rehabilitation and social reintegration programs for inmates and pursues that simultaneously. She is also a member of OGB ISAC, where she actively collaborates with partner countries in the in international volunteer programs as a mentor, organizer, and a counselor. She has also been an active member with ISAC and has worked in various countries under the banner as a content developer for analysis of current condition and promotion of tourism in Egypt, as well as planning events and projects based on the sustainable development goals. She has also worked in Thailand with ISEC as an English teacher for primary school children, organizing events under various domains for this. We welcome you, Juliana. Now you may uh, carry on with the session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm really glad to be here. By the way, if you don't understand my accent, just uh, keep the hands up and say to be slower because I don't know how you perceive it. So oh, I yeah. wish, thank you. thank you so much. I wish to share something with you, but I can't, but I, I also I can talk uh, freely. Doesn't matter for you, uh, for me, no, but I. Do you want to present a PPT? Uh, yes. If yeah, if uh, it's okay for you, like if it's easy for you for the informations to be uh, I don't know, more structured. That's that would be okay. That okay. would be even okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I'm so atechnological. Ah, sure. Do you see it? Um, Just tell me. If yes, you see yes, it. yes. Okay, yes. perfectly. So, here uh, I will present again myself that how you know I'm working in psychology and also I'm specialized in rehabilitation programs. And currently I'm working in a prison in Romania. Uh, for around two and a half years. So it's a lot, it's not a lot of time for us, but it's a lot of time uh, after you are dealing when you are uh, young and you are still um, learning in university. I mean, you want to take a PhD, I'm talking about. So uh, you are here and uh, you are, let's say, in the middle of your career and you want to make the people from the prison to change their lives and you are dealing with this kind of theories from university and you are thinking about this kind of theories is going to change something in their lives like they are going to improve they are changing or not and uh, i will have here the principal theories of criminal behavior and uh, i will say that this is the basic of any psychologist that means there are more much more that you have to take care of it but trust me, you are there in the prison and uh, you want to be like a really, in the beginning, psychologist. You are thinking like this, oh my God, I'm going to identify a pattern and I'm going to apply a specific treatment. And But you don't take care of something really important, like that person knows how to read. A lot of people from the prison they, they don't know how to read, they didn't finish high school, or um, I don't know, they didn't go to school at all, trust me. Or they are drug addicts, or they have alcohol issues, 
maybe they were abused maybe they were like business uh, uh, panel sentence or maybe they are criminal with really high aggressive risk or ja or they are just sexual assaulters or i don't know they um, you know, don't have a career pattern or career plan or something no so a lot of people when they are going to prison they judge the prisoners as being with really low iq like from this see if i can put yeah this theory or is the same issues with the nurture nature theory but actually the fact it's from the all the research that we have we don't know i'm going to say how stupid they are i'm going to be honest because that they, they don't have the patience to complete your test and you are there and you are just please i will give you more points or i'm going to give you um a recompense that you completed my test and they are going to say oh okay lady and they uh will complete your test really bad like oh i forgot this question hmm what does it mean hmm okay i finished i can go can i give my uh, reward okay bye and that's it you know because now i want to tell you also stories about how the life in prison is like you are going to say that they are stupid just a stupid person can make no can be in the prison no it's not true just imagine in my first week at working in the prison i was talking with um, a really high criminal risk person and i was there and he was like oh hello lady psychologist what are you doing i was in my office with my colleague and i was like mm, okay and he said i have a problem a paper problem can you solve it and I, okay i can solve it and my colleague said um i'm going i'm going to call this person john like the prisoner john do you want to talk uh, with uh, juliana and he said yeah, of course let's talk and i was uh, started to talk with him like uh, what are you doing here how many uh, in how many years you are going going to be released uh, do you have family don't you have family what uh, if you want to tell me because it's up to him if you want to tell me can you um, how did you arrive here even if i have his file it's really polite to ask him if he wants to tell you and he said like this yes if you know me from the papers i'm here uh, for robbing but the people but actually i committed a crime and i was like okay but you are not here for the crime and he was really really proud of himself and he said uh no because he, they didn't find any proof and sorry who has the microphone opened thank you so much because i'm not hearing and that's it so he was like I'm here for robbery. I'm here for robbery, not for crime. And he was really, really smart. And he told me how uh, a certain time that he robbed like a lady. And he was uh, he was specifically going in the group. He and with other two guys. In that moment, they were wearing really good clothes, like suits, like business looking, you know. And they were they were uh, trying to identify a house where no one is there, like to be empty, completely empty. And one time they were there and uh, a lady was in the house. She got really scared, like really, really scared. And uh, they had also guns. And they said, lady, please, um, don't be scared or something like this. We are going to leave. Uh, don't worry because uh, we don't want to hurt innocent people. And they just left. They ran away. But the lady on the street, uh, she saw them and she just screamed in the street that people, people, uh, these are robbers. Please catch them because on the street there were a lot of people 
our guy, our guy from the prison, not his partners, because he was wearing good clothes and he got a gun. He just took out his gun in front of his colleagues and he said, stop, police. You know, this is kind of the intelligence that we are dealing with the people in the prison. Like, just imagine the fact that you can, you are trying to get off and uh, to try to escape. So our guy was so, so intelligent that he didn't was convicted. Like he wasn't, he didn't let any proof for his murder because the, his murder was another other story. But he has like in that situation of robbery, he has the intelligence just to um, be uh, to take clothes, good clothes, no one to think that he's a thief and to have a gun and to scream to his colleagues, police, stop and to run after them. And all of them that they, they escape because no one, no civil from the street didn't think that that guy is a robber. OK. They have a lot of stories, I swear. So just think about this. You are a psychologist in the prison and you are thinking like this. These programs, they are really working for this person. It's, it's really change something in their behavior or not. Because look at this, it's just a statistic from 2002. There are around 60,000 inmates that are released from US. I tell you about Romania. It's a small, really small country from Europe. Uh, they are released from the whole country around 2,000 people. Just imagine 2,000 people. I don't know how it's in India, but it's like because it's a really much bigger country. I suppose there are around 10,000 or 20,000. I just suppose. I'm not sure. And just imagine like the number, it's increasing. Like the people are coming and they are released from the prison. And just imagine again that the percent of the people that are coming back this coming back word, I don't know if uh, you are familiar with it, it's called recidivism. Recidivism uh, is the action that uh, the people are coming back in the prison. And it's around, so see here, seven from 10 people. Uh, yeah. And they are in less than three years. Like it's a percent of, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to be like 60, 70 percent rate of uh, recidivism in general. The lowest uh, recidivism number, it's in Norway, just in Norway, because also they take care of their rehabilitation program. So just imagine you have these numbers in front of you and you are thinking, but how I'm going to do my job? My job, it's really important. Like I'm, I'm doing a big change because this job, it's um, it's important for the citizen, for your self-esteem, because you are not a robot that is working in the prison. You try to change something. That's why you are there, not for money. And also, it's like, I have these numbers, and there are a lot. Am I doing a really great change? These programs are really good. They, they're cureless. They're really so bad that they can be, I don't know, fixed. And I just put here three um, researches about how, what kind of disease, what kind of problems we have in the prison. So the principal problem that you are going to see all the time in the prison, it's antisocial personality disorder. All the time, it's around 60, 70 percent from the people in the prison. Yeah, it's really a big number. I don't know if it's self-explanatory or not, but just imagine you have people with no norm, um, no behavior. They don't care about the law. They don't care about normal norms. They don't. They are aggressive. They are cheating all the time. Uh, they have really high impulsivity. Um, they don't have conscious how we call conscious they have they have their own conscious and they are uh, irresponsible and also not just here we have borderline disorder like just imagine anxious depression hostility isolation mm, they have mood changes 
They are paranoid. They don't want to talk with you if they don't have a benefit from it. Also, they are anxious. Just look at this number. 55% uh, is really big. Psychosexual disorders. I suppose you are familiar with it. And uh, I suppose you, are, you really don't know how a psychologist is working with a sexual offender. I'm going to tell you later. It's really, really bad. Also, psychotic disorders and organic disorders. This is much worse. Another study, uh, 2010, also anxiety, drug addict, depression, alcohol dependence, sleep disorder or hallucination. This is more like you get it in the prison, not when you, we are there. Also, another study, this is the last one, but look at this number of inmates. Personal disorder. 65 in men, 42 in women. Why this difference? Okay, you are going to tell me that because uh, women, there are not a lot of women in the prison system. Okay, there are not, but why? A lot of research from the last days, uh, they found out that women have a, self, a higher self-control than men. Okay, and uh, how are the women that are going in the prison. Just imagine, most of them, they have family issues. They are from uh, a father uh, alcohol dependence, or they have depression, or they uh, have some problems, um, relationship problems, or they are part from a clan, a gang. I don't know how, if in India it's not. Just imagine uh, this kind of clans from Italy. Gangs, you know, uh, the godfather kind. Yes, here in Romania we have this kind of clans. So maybe they are from that part or they are coming from a rural environment. They don't have um, education, maybe, or self low self-esteem. Major depression. It's self-explanatory again that the percent of women, it's really big. It's bigger, much bigger than uh, men. And psychosis. So again, just imagine all these people, a really high percent of them, they have antisocial personality disorder. How we are dealing with it? I'm going to tell you. So it's working. This is the main problem here. It is working. This pro uh, these programs, they are working. I can give you a whole, whole list with research in this field that they are working because they tried everything. Trust me. They tried in touch. They tried uh, professional uh, rehabilitation, they tried education, CBT, they tried a lot of models, uh, military camps, um, punishment, they tried e everything. Uh, not all of them are working, but these new models are working, and if they are good, made it. And I will tell you how we should made it to be efficiently for the people from the prison to improve their mental health, of course. So, again, we have the same question. It is working, really, it is working, because I found a research. Just look at this. I found a research where a guy from 25% of the prison who made really an education program, just imagine, you don't give to all of them an education program. So, 25, from that 25, 70% of them, they didn't have uh, a high school diploma. Just imagine, you have a bunch of people, you give them an education program. I will tell you shortly what it means. Like, it's a session of study, or you give them a book, and you organize, like, a group talking, or uh, you give them to work on a paper, a prison paper. These are the models. And uh, just imagine, 70% uh, percent of them, they don't know how to talk. They don't have a diploma. They Maybe they know how to write, but 
mm, don't have a really good grammar, they don't know how to express themselves, they don't like to read, they just talked between them to know what is the main subject from the book. And that's it. You know, so again, how we are doing this. And the main problem from the prison that they, it didn't work until now, until now, I'm telling that it's not working even now, if you ask me. But this is the other problem, like political problems, money, investition, time, um, officers, more, more psychologists, this kind of stuff. And the main problem is the confusion between practices of punishment and goal of rehabilitation. And I will ask you as a, I don't know, as a public, a person who didn't go to a prison. Okay, I'm going to just open the microphone and tell me who was in the prison until now. No one? Really? No one? Okay, I'm going to ask another question. Um, why do you want uh, a prisoner to be uh, incarcerated, like to be in the prison. Why? Why do you want a criminal, a person who uh, made something bad, doesn't matter, uh, sexual assault, robbery, uh, business uh, um, criminal panel, doesn't matter. Why he has to go in the prison? So he doesn't commit that crime once again? Okay. And help he needs to you know deal with the issue that led him to commit the crime okay other uh, opinions i'm asking like i'm a journalist like you are the main public that he didn't go uh in the prison so why these people has to be there okay I'm not going to make you more uh, anxious and I will tell you what actually you are smart people, you are psychologists, you know, so you are going, of course, to answer that the main goal is rehabilitation, to stay there and to fix them, you know, if it's possible to fix them, we will see. Uh, but the public, it's not thinking like this, they are thinking I need these people who made to my family, they are really personal, a really uh, harm to be there, to not see them, to stay there how much as possible, to don't make any harm anymore to the society, you know? So this is the main principle of the prison, not rehabilitation, just to be punished you know that this is the problem because even okay uh, i saw a lot of research like here in romania also that we ask uh, the public like really um, entrepreneur small entrepreneurs like uh, if you would know that a person has a criminal history like panel history he was in the prison doesn't matter for what Crime, uh, crime, just uh, a little robbery, just uh, tricky things, that doesn't matter. He was in the prison. You don't know why he's in the prison. Maybe he's going to tell you, maybe not. Doesn't matter. You are going to hire this person? No, the answer is no, because you, we don't trust them. Because the system, it's in this way made, you don't want to trust them not because you don't trust me you don't want you don't want to risk this is the point because um how we saw before how many people they are coming back 60 percent mm -hmm. a lot of number so uh that's why the a lot of um, rehabilitation program are not working and more they are like um a pushing up um, system of developing disorders, developing ang uh, anxiety, depression, antisocial disorders like uh, paranoia, yeah, borderline, doesn't matter what they are developing. They are there surrounded, don't forget about it, 
they are surrounded by other people with the same issues or much worse. They will, uh, they see a psychologist or an officer, they are talking with like normal people. Last time, just I suppose one time, two times per day, they are sleeping with other prisoners, not with us, you know? This is the problem. So that's why it's not working, because it's a confusion between punishment, the main fact, and the rehabilitation, because they don't have actually um, a benefit from rehabilitation. So these are the main problems, because they are, when they are coming in the prison, they are putting in two categories, two or three category just to high risk or low risk doesn't matter and but not on their needs like he needs to have therapy or he needs he has depression also he has family issues he was i don't know um assaulted and it was a self um, self defense maybe we don't know, so they are just in high risk or low risk. This is the label. The punishment is the fundamental of the system. This is, again, another point. Um, doesn't matter the goal of rehabilitation. The important is the punishment. Rehabilitation is the second, third, fourth, X, Y, Z. Doesn't matter priority. Why? I will tell you again why. <laughs> because look at this again. I don't know how it's in India. If you can tell me, you can correct me. But here and in universal um, prisons, uh, the prisoner doesn't have money, you know. So there, and you are, of course, he doesn't have money because he has a bed, he has all life conditions, he has food. Yes, but he has food on certain hours, specifically hours. Like, if you missed that meal, it's gone. You wait for the other one. So they need, actually, money for their own pleasures. Cigarettes, mm, alcohol, it's not allowed. Uh, maybe snacks, maybe mm, papers, maybe, doesn't matter. A toy or clothes or whatever, you know, so they need money, so just think about it, they need money, maybe family will give them, if they have luck, because most of the mem uh, family members, they don't want to hear about them again, for sure, so they need to work, it's not mandatory, it's just a possibility for them, so in the prison, you can work for money, and you can gain your money, like um, here it's around you can keep 10 percent of your uh, salary because 90 percent is going to the um, uh, to the prison you know and it's self-explanatory why so you have 10 percent mm, enough money cigarettes per day like it's fine for them trust me it's really fine for them so um, they are working all day this is their benefit or they just stay, or just relax, or just don't believe they don't, they get bored. They are just fine. They are staying there doing nothing. It's commodity. It's just mm, a lifestyle. They're there talking with other people about what? Doesn't matter. They want to stay or they want to work for their money because they need cigarettes. And that's it. You know? So... How you make them, or it's not mandatory, how you make them to go to the rehabilitation programs? You don't. Oh, sorry, I'm really upset about it. <laughs> how I told you, it's no benefit from rehabilitation programs because from punishment is the time. If you are doing your work, uh, your punishment is reduced. With what? One hour, two hours. Mm, per day maybe and then it's raised like one day two days three days so just imagine you are there and you committed doesn't matter the crime whatever and you have 
10 years of sentence. I tell you for sure, you are going to get out in five years. Yeah, in five years or less, depends. So it's not a good benefit from them to go to a rehabilitation program. They are saying like there. What are the main problems uh, to an inmate? They develop ego defense or like ways of defense. Like I'm going to blame the victim. Mm, my family didn't support me or um, Oh my god, I love to be a whore. Of course I'm going to have sex for money and maybe mm, to accept it. And maybe I'm going to kill that guy because he tried to touch my boobs that he didn't pay for it, you know? Or, um, mm, of course, I have an affair, I have a business, and of course I made uh, some um, bad papers, not um, for the law, that are not good for the law, because in this country, if you don't trick the system, you don't gain the money, you know? There's this kind of um, motivation they have, they have excuses, because they don't want to admit that they committed something bad, something that hurt other people. And you have to identify um, this kind of way, this kind of defense that they try to develop and to stick with it all the time they are there, you know? Also, you, don't ha you have to build simple cognitive structure. You don't have to, com to complicate uh, the system of rehabilitation. You just have to find their needs, their defense, and that's it. And you have to focus on the maybe one or two main ideas. Okay, I will tell you again. Like, um, if you are, um, let's say, um, um, that criminal that I told you about, Okay, it's a little bit extreme example because um, it was, yeah, it's really, it's really, a, but it's good, it's a good example. How you can, um, let's say, you make him to follow a treatment, a psychological treatment. It's simple because if you were talking with him, you will see that he has that um, arrogance that he needs. The, he needs uh, approvement from the people around him. And how you are doing this? You are just making him, if you are listening to him, he was, he had a little business. And also he had a bunch of people around him. So you are focusing actually of controlling the uh, angriness. You know, because this was the main problem. Not You are not focusing on his norms. You are not focusing on the fact that criminal act, it's not good. No, it's, this is not the problem because being an antisocial person, having an antisocial personality disorder, you can, actually you can fix it. You have to fix little problems side by side, you know. You can't solve them, all of them. Just you, on the moment, you have to find the principal problems from where he started. So his problem was that he didn't get enough respect from a member of his team. And that's it, you know. But you can focus on the relationship of his family and the fact that he needs how to talk with other people Focusing on the fact that he knows that it's smart. So simple. Okay. The effect of social norms. You have to manage to have a complemental, like, um, I don't know. He has his specific norms, like his own norms, clan norms, doesn't matter. And social norms, they are social accepted norms, like our norms. And you have to find a common sense of it. Because, uh, let's say, on this guy again, a social norm will see that you don't harm your family. The family is important. They have, the family 
loyalty and you have to um, to find that norm that it's common for him or and for society also understand even if it's um, maybe hard to understand that he has his kind of norms and uh, he don't care about law or about uh, self control no he have some of them and you you have to find it or you just have to change the words you know it's it's really specific in cbt you just rephrasing what he said you know and even if he under uh, he doesn't understand in the beginning you just keep pushing this idea because uh it's a synonym it's something um it's something like so the idea of this norm is going to to be normal for him also motivation for the treatment huh. how i told you if you find a way to give them a, re a recompense a reward something doesn't matter they are going to follow your treatment just that simple i have no something more about here it's just about the system and if you have the support of the system for your from your country it's good if you don't have you just have to keep trying or to attract them in another way also you have to deal with the fact that when they're in the prison they are surrounded by the other prisoners and they keep um spreading the mm, the ideas of the criminal that nothing is good for uh, their own for the society everyone is bad everyone took marijuana smoke marijuana but uh, what if i'm growing it inside of the house like oh my god they're making a business of course but uh, they don't understand that's illegal or something like this but you have to say that if you really love it you can move in amsterdam you can move in usa and it's perfectly legal then you can push them if they don't want to change themselves they don't have um yeah you can do really bad things in the prison like to suggest them to make to still make a bad thing but in another way because if you see that they came again and again and again in the prison and the main focus for them is to have really good life with um, uh, girls with botox and with big boobs and uh, uh, traveling in saint tropez tenerife or thailand or indonesia trust me i had this discussion with a guy if this is the main purpose in life you have to try to convince them to make like uh, again the same mistake but legally you understand and also to ignore their hedonic perspective uh psychology uh, lady psychologist uh, wh when i'm going to get out of the prison i'm going to not smoke anymore i'm not going to go to the horse again also i'm going to be a really good person i'm going to appreciate more my family my um, you know, i'm going to discover myself i'm going to find a job no bullshit trust me so these are the main risk factors that you have to take care of it and all the time to make a list or just to have like uh, this is the first brick on uh, choosing a really good program of rehabilitation antisocial behavior what kind of behavior uh, they are starting it's high risk not high risk depends of it antisocial personality it's pretty easy you just need to uh, see how they are behavior how they are manipulate you how they try to manipulate you of course i was manipulated a lot of times and i'm still manipulated because they are really really good liars 
but also you have to try to find patterns in their talking, in their uh, behavior. Oh my God, you are the best psychologist. Oh, I can't wait to talk against you tomorrow, Juliana. Oh, did you read another book? Yes, of course. Oh, uh, do you believe that we can share a cigarette? Or let's talk about, oh my God, did you heard about that guy who was murdered? Yes, it's not acceptable. You know, this kind of talking, like they, they keep fooling with you, you know? Again. Ah, oh, by the way, you can make that paper for me? Oh, of course. You know, so they need something or they need talking, small talking. Criminal thinking. This is more about attitudes, values. Yeah, you can find this way really easy with a test of attitudes tests. It's pretty easy and actually um, kind of you can't change this depends if it's a bad attitude or against the officers or against the programs. You know how to work on it. You really need it in your um, uh, in your case. And the social relationships. How is the deal with the people from the prison and outside the prison? Family and marital status. The family is really important. Most of them they are talking with their wives, their uh, girlfriends. They have oh. They request, um, how is calling, I don't know the English name, like um, a night, I a day, no, how, a sexual day, like the permission to have a room in the prison and to have sexual um, actions with his partner in the prison, you know, so one day in one room and that's it. It costs a lot, trust me, it costs a lot of points, it costs around six months of hard working, not bad behavior, going also to rehabilitation programs, just one day around some hours, yeah, just imagine, few hours, just to have sex in the prison, in a bedroom, looks like shit, trust me. I saw it, and uh, that's it, you know, this importance for them. School and work status, and also leisure and recreation activities. What are their hobbies? A lot of people that I was in the prison, like I, I met a guy, like his, we call him um, Little Hands. This is the nickname of this criminal guy from the prison. He's really innocent. Like, if you are talking with him, he's really innocent. But he ha he did bad things, trust me. Really bad things, like really high aggressive crimes, serial crimes. What does not matter? But actually, he's really, he has a passion in uh, painting. All the walls from the prison, like from certain, like recreation, um, building because we have a recreation building uh it's painted by him and he's so uh, like he's so soft when he's painting and he's talking with you and he believes that he really uh, trusts that he uh, did something bad and he said that i'm not going to do some bad things again because i'm focusing on my art He's releasing in two years. We are going to see. But this is the point. You have to give them a purpose, a hobby. And uh, substance use. Also, you have to deal with this because they don't have to have alcohol or drugs in the prison. How? This is the main structure of a program. Uh, from here, because it's a, it's a research that I find from one thousand uh, from a lot of papers that this uh, these are the main uh, this is the main structure like academic education like mm, they need books or they need session of stocking or uh, they didn't finish high school or uh, primary school or they want to do university or some things but no career technical education it's like um, they need to find uh, another path. They need to find uh, what they are passionate about or how to make a paper. Like uh, after releasing, how you are going to apply for a job if you don't know how to make a CV? Or how you are going to pay your taxes? 
this kind of session are good also because you engage them to be responsible for their lives and you help them that to don't um i don't know to ask for help from the guys who is their fault he's in the prison like he's bad um, group that influences him to make a bad decision substance use disorders treatment this is it's a whole it's a whole discussion about it the best i will tell you just like an information for you to know the best treatment in this moment it's um rehabilitation camp it's called like this because you i will uh, tell you it's like t uh, around a small group of prisoners clean not using drugs or alcohol they are putting in another area of the um, prison and they are staying there having responsibilities like a community it's not like really a camp it's like a community it's a drug community treatment you know so they are all the time they have their own responsibilities to um, kitchen to cook to the uh, animals uh, to um, some other support groups they are helping the psychologists like uh, with uh, please uh, go to that person and uh, to come in my office please help me with this with other stuff they are working also so they have responsibilities and two times per uh, per day they have also the group session of talking you know this is the best program of uh, for them they are staying there they are sleeping together but outside of the other uh, prisoners uh employment preparation also to dealing with the family the same thing like a career it's more technical and you try to prepare them for a specific career and cognitive behavior therapy cbt is the best in this uh, field if you try something else if you try integrative one if you try rogers one doesn't matter the cbt is the best model ever don't try something else or yes, the creative one, you make them, oh my God, let's uh, dry uh, a tree, let's make this amazing painting. No, this is something else, it's not CBT. You just try them to um, uh, to develop them like um, a hobby that they don't think about their problems or uh, their issues. Yeah, it's good for anxiety or for managing the angriness, but no cbt is the best uh what i didn't put here it's uh because the study didn't have it's sexual offenders treatment if you know i will uh, come back to there it's a model that i want to show you um sexual offenders um i will tell you just some small words about it about the treatment they can't be fixed i don't know who told you something else like a medical stuff yeah is good the medical is developing it's really nice but i'm talking about um a normal uh, therapy session it's really hard and it takes around five years of therapy that person can stay in the prison for three years okay i will tell you a case uh, about the number like a father um i'm sorry because i'm talking about bad cases if you are sensitive or something just tell me but this is the field i'm really sorry if you can you can stop the the microphone uh, so this father assaulted uh raped his three years old daughter and he made not he didn't stop he made sexual materials with her just Imagine three years old daughter, three years, it's a baby, it's, it's fucking a kid. Yes, and uh, just guess how many years he uh, have on the sentence. Can you tell me? A number? I'm hearing a microphone, so how many years of, uh, do you believe that has the sentence? Four years. How many? Twenty? Three to four. Yes, actually it's really good. So actually in the first instance, he received six years. 
he got out from two and a half. So he has, yeah, he assaulted his daughter, three years old daughter, and he got out after two and a half years. How can you work with this kind of persons? And now I'm going to tell you something shocking. How we actually we are supposed to wear, work with these persons. You have to listen to them. Yeah. You have to listen to them and to support them and to put questions like, how was she? What did you use? What are your fantasies? What did you want to do to her? Well, do you have any fantasy with other kids? It's just kids or women in general? Mm, did you um, have some self-sexual actions? Did you like it? What kind of porn you are watching on Pornhub? What kind of porn websites you are using? So this is the beginning of the treatment. You are listening to him, you are asking him, you are trying to see what is in his head because you can do something else. And uh, you try to um, like to make him to understand that he has the group support. I know it's really bad, like no one is going to support him. Like they are, they are staying in another area of the um, um, prison because they are going to be attacked by other persons from the prison yeah the other prisoners have their own norms i told you no innocence this is the main purpose of them like did if you raped your daughter you are going to be killed there trust me so you have to try to make them to understand they have the fully support of the society of the group that this is normal, this is normal to think about it, that this is normal to think about your daughter, to your daughter, uh, instead you to sexual, I don't know, behavior. But it's not like you try to push him to do that behavior, you try to, to make him to understand that it's not something judgeable. Because if it's judgeable, he is going to do it. If he understand, he understand that it's not judgeable. He are going to stop it because he understand that he hurts other person. You know, this is the the little thing that you have main in, in focus in your mind when you are talking with this person. And usually, a psychologist after one hour of um, talking with a um, sexual offender, you need around three hours of uh, therapy for yourself and a break. Yeah, you receive it from the society, like from the system. No, you don't. You go to on your money to a therapy to fix your problems after uh, you talk with this person for five years or not. So, just to the end, this is the main model for rehabilitation. It's a CBT model. And it's like risk, need, and res responsibility model. I didn't put here all the research because it's a really long list. How efficient is this one? Because it's not focusing on a certain um, sentence. It's focusing on how you, we approach the, um, the treatment, you know? So you have to ad ad identify the needs of the criminal because he ha he made that uh, action he has that behavior because he had the needs like mm, I did like it's a criminal because he offended me of course um, I killed that guy because uh, as a woman because uh, he didn't talk nicely with me so I need from other people to have more respect by me you know. This kind of needs. Also, you have to deal with the fact that they have antisocial attitudes and really low self-control. And also, this is just um, 
this is from also from a necessity of from some needs that you have to identify and to not solve them specifically just you have to make them to understand um, the possibility to solve them in a benefic way also you have to make the treatment to be attractive you know it's interesting the treatment we are not just talking we are doing big stuff here like even this session do you understand it's really big stuff like all the time on the street you can find the um, a, a person with criminal record you know so it's a big stuff so even if this session did, didn't want so interested that you expect it to be maybe this voice my voice or something like this or the powerpoint presentation was good for you to understand that it's really really a big thing you know so you have to find a way to make him to be attractive of this treatment so and the last thing is to focus on the cbt therapy to understand the therapeutic alliance to understand to make him to understand that community has his support because he's in the prison because he was banished from the society he has to come back to the society he, wa he wants to know that society loves him. Beside all the shits that he did in his life, he, w he has to understand that society doesn't punish him anymore after releasing. He loves him. We love him. You understand? So you have to make, uh, to make uh, uh, this point really important. Also, to rephrasing all he's saying. I told you about the hedonic talking. Oh, I'm going to not to do it anymore. Oh my God, this site is really bad. I did it because I need money, blah, blah, blah. You know, you have to rephrase it just to find uh, another explanation, explanation of what he said, something more ethical. And also to focus on decision goals and the fact that what is now, it's now and here, because the future is just hedonic, and that's it. So this was my presentation, and I'm really glad that we have it. I don't see my mouse anymore, of course. And uh, if you have questions, just ask me. I'm really here to answer to all of them. Um, I Thank have a so question. Much. OK, please. Mama, I have a question. Please, please. Ma'am, as you already said that uh, no one will want, uh, like, uh, no one will want to work with a prisoner. But you also mentioned that uh, uh, there was a painter who used to paint things out. So, ma'am, I'm just asking that they should be given second chance to work upon. Like, I was just saying that. Uh, can you repeat the question? Because I didn't understand. Like, just. Put, uh, make the short one and put the microphone here. Mom, I just want to say that ki you said that prisoners should not get a mala, uh, prisoners, uh, no one would like to work with a prisoner. So I'm just asking, Mom, like, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, there is a painter who can give and be, who can be brought to a second chance, like, if they can get a second chance and work well after that. Yes, actually, uh, if I understood correctly, it's better to write because I told you I'm not. I don't know if I understood correctly or not. If uh, to focus on the purpose, actually, we have uh, you have to um, like you know when you have uh, you make therapy. I suppose all of them you are you did therapy session or you had therapy classes. So the first thing that you do in a therapy is to have that um analyze of the client from what from all his life from all his action all of needs so you have to find one purpose or two purpose that is good for him even if it's about just a little one the family of uh, uh something else you know so wait a second because i will see in the chat mm -hmm can be fixed okay sexual offenders can be fixed i told you about this uh medical they can be like chemical castration it's uh, 
the main medical solution for it. But uh, what I told you about that session is the only one that it's working. It's If you ask me, it's not working. Like, it's my opinion for uh, almost three years of working there and uh, having just one or two sessions with uh, sexual offenders. But this is, for now, just the only solution for us. I don't know how it's going to be in the future, but this is the only solution. And if you want to develop this kind of treatment, you have to just work with them and to work on this system that is working until now, and then to develop something more, maybe. Uh, conjugal vi uh, visits, yeah. Mm. Mindfulness. <laughs> What about mindfulness? Because it's such a um, main subject on these days. Yes, you can say that mindfulness it, it's good for them. I will tell you for what kind of people it's good. It's, uh, for people who um, has really um, a high uh, intelligence, high IQ, not the low person that they don't care about it. They care about just the main facts that they need money, they need pleasure now, right now. You apply mindfulness on them and it's like, lady, do you are going to uh, put my uh, sentence smaller? You, I'm going to get out from the prison faster? No. You can't do it to the person that they don't care about it. Yeah, I told you, it's good for the uh, persons that they have, uh, maybe they finished high school, they have um, some angry issues, and also they are receptive. They have a really strong family connection, and uh, they understand that this, or also from the drug, I told you about the drug community. It's good to apply mindfulness of them also because they are not on drugs anymore. It's a community that is supposed to um, explore the community support, the group support, you know, but in other ways, no. And I suppose there are really few researches on uh, mindfulness in the prison. Uh, you can do your paper on it. It would be really nice, like an advice. Um, and that's it. These are all the questions until now. I told you, if you really want to ask me, it's really better to write because I, be I barely understand. And I'm sure that you barely understand me because of my accent also. Thank you, Yulana. I mean, no, uh, there wasn't Hello? any problem. Yeah. Hello? Okay, this is Shivam. Uh, I have a question. Okay, uh, Shiva, my question is, uh, the reference to the movie Shiva, and the silence you... of the law. Uh, again, it is a request to all the students that if you are having any question, please write it in the chat box. Uh, that was really very uh, wonderful presentation, Yuliana. And uh, um, these, our, uh, this batch of students, uh, they have have not been to field visit because of uh, corona pandemic but in 2018 uh, we from our school of humanities and social sciences javan lake city university conducted research in uh, uh, prison and there we conducted research on around 125 students and where our psychology students were the one who conducted this research so the basic uh, main objective of the research was to assess the emotional uh, assessment, uh, emotional intelligence uh, level, so that they can be later on can be rehabilitated, uh, you know, in the society. And from the research, what I'm I'm just sharing with you. Maybe students can write down the uh, you know their questions in the chat box. What we observed that. Um, in the, this prison authority, they have divided uh, the prisoners in three categories. Category one was very, uh, you know, uh, they have committed very uh, less, uh, you can say, intensity of crime. Whereas uh, the second category was, bit, uh, and the third category was very, very um, harsh criminals or hard criminals. 
so what we have observed from our result that uh, the, the criminals they they want to get rehabilitated but at the same time and most of the time their family members were not welcoming them they were telling that if the moment uh, your sentence is over just go somewhere else don't come back to house because it will be going to have repercussion on other family members um, in the family so that is something like when uh, you were uh, discussing about social norms and you know the social aspects of uh, the rehabilitation process yes it does work here in india also it is true in india also it's really nice really i love this kind of uh, researches and actually you don't find a solution about this uh, family issues like uh, usually in romania like to solve this family um, rejection how we call it beside like the normal uh, solution with the uh, uh, come to visit or uh, you are talking with the psychologist of the prison and i will tell you how i'm going to update you with this, his real situation actually you can't do it sometimes because uh, family can reject him really badly and the main focus is to let him to keep like to make him uh, to um, Uh, go to a social support um, outside of the prison if it exists or not like to go to um, like uh, the prison organize um, i don't know uh, a specific place like a building for people who doesn't have where to go after they are releasing and they are saying there if they their behavior was really good and they are say, they are saying there after they are releasing and that's it you know so maybe his their family will accept them after they are getting a job and uh, they are not coming back after they are staying in that place is that building with other criminals but like they are in probation you know it's kind of like a probation so this was the solution i know what you are talking about uh i don't like the emotional intelligence uh, construct but uh, yes i can say that um, the solutions are but it's like it's also about the fact that the family doesn't have the contact with the prisoner that's it this and the uh, the officer doesn't uh, implicate in uh, their connection oh, let's see the questions ways to motivate the inmates i told you the principal motivation uh, is to give them points to give them um, to release faster like i have smaller sentence i get out faster and how you are doing this you are talking just with the main representative of the prison like this guy if he wants to do this treatment he's he needs uh um to reduce his sentence with two days or three days and that's it and it's going to be good for him like and you have the improvement and also another stuff you can say that uh, if you are coming to the treatment i'm going to give you one package of cigarettes one per month it's bright doesn't matter really doesn't matter if if his own good it's good also if you want to come to the treatment i let you to have a cat in the dorm or i let you to uh, have this certain magazine that you like like um, i don't know woman magazine with naked woman on the cover or something like this doesn't matter or if you are good i can give you a brand new clothes or i let you outside to visit your family i give you more points to go outside to visit your family for one day it's possible so this kind of motivation you can't motivate them otherwise trust me mm. find it difficult to come back yeah it's difficult for them no actually it's really easy for them to come back they want to come back it's is the true because the society doesn't accept them 
the family doesn't accept them. Like, I had a situation with um, a guy, he was like 22, 23 years old, like you guys, I suppose. Uh, his family didn't want him, like your case that you told about the family doesn't want to accept them anymore. And uh, he was like, I don't know where to go, like, what I'm doing. And he was just sleeping outside of the prison, like, because he wanted, like, please, I want to come back. I want to do something to come back because I don't have family. I don't have social support. I have nothing. So he just slept outside of the prison because he wanted to come back. And we were like, we can't let you inside again. You just understand it. You can't. And he, uh, he said, I'm going to do, to rob a bank or something, to rob a, a shop or something you are going to let me inside or not because you can call the police from right now and we are okay and he come back because of it it's not because we didn't try to help me him or something like this we told him you have social support outside you have groups you have anything you want but he didn't want he was dependent on the prison system you also have to try to make him to not be dependent of him to not to not have the groups that support him or something like this so you actually uh, like one month or two months before uh, being released you have to be assured that his family is supporting him that uh, he has a job or he knows how to apply for a job he knows what kind of job he wants also that uh, a certain kind of group support accept him you have to keep in touch with them that that guy it's um he's going to the sessions also and uh, he has a place to sleep or to go to his family he has some money to go with the train to his family you know that's it. If uh, these uh, things that are not applied, your guy is going to come back again because he is going to call his guy like a drug dealer or something like this or a really friendly guy that he said, OK, dude, I'm I'm here for you. But, uh, you know, I have a deal. We have to rob that uh, shop again or something like this. So, you know, so you have to take care of it like three months uh, before he's going released. Uh, about the CBT, wait, I'm listening here. I'm listening, oh my God, I'm reading here. Uh, but due to their environment, they are locked in. They tend to go back to their usual antisocial behavior. Um, you are talking about, the, I suppose, when you are um, telling me about CBT, you are talking about CBT session and also when he's coming back to the lock, I mean, in the um, in the room with other other people, right? In, in a cell. In the oh. cell, okay. Okay, so, uh, yes, I know what you, but actually the fact that it's you don't know what is happening there, how you know that? Uh, everything is going back uh, bad there. You don't know. So, uh, as a psychologist, you are talking with other prisoners. Like in my office, all the time they are coming. Like, uh, sorry, lady, I have a paper. Okay, sorry. Uh, when is starting the session from 2 p.m. or is changing or something? And I can ask, how is the deal with that guy? Or uh, I can ask him how it's, um, um, I don't know, how it's the, uh, the behavior of the other uh, prisoners from your room. Did you have problems? All the time, just don't forget about it. They are like kids. They are really like kids. If they have a problem, they are going to complain about it. Oh my God, I don't like that person. He's so messy. Uh, he told me something bad. Uh, so all the time you are going to know because uh, they have a need to talk with you because you are the, they believe that uh, you are going to solve their problems. So even if they have a problem there, you are going to know that thing. And also, if it's something bad, like um, mm, a conflict or something, you are going to work with him on um, uh, discussion, the problem. Like, you can make some session, like, um, I don't know how to say in 
in English. I suppose it's uh, theater, uh, theater sessions, you know, like a role, um, role sessions of therapy, how you are feeling, how he, do you believe he's feeling, how you are going to answer to these questions, what it's his kind of question, how you are going to talk with me, come on, I'm going to be really bad of it, or I'm going to be really rude. Like how you see me, I'm not like I'm not behaving like a normal psychologist because I work in the prison. Like I'm really bad and really I can talk really dirty actually because it's the way you are talking with them and depends depends of the people depends of IQ depends of the uh, history um, education. But actually you try to make him to um, uh, come back in his shell with his CPT session and it, and if he doesn't like it it means that your session is working and after it you can move him you know if it's not possible to move him you keep him around you it means you can do something for me you can take care of the session for uh, two PM. You can go to work. They have the possibility to work, you know. So it's mandatory. You can go to work. You can in the night. Doesn't matter. You have radio. You can talk with your family. You can go to the library. You also you can talk with me or to be my helper until six when I'm leaving for from the prison. So this is you have to find a way to make sure that he was receptive of your treatment and he doesn't like the um, uh, behavior of the others and he tries to change it and to um, to keep his change up that's it I don't know if I was pretty clear but that's it until now <laughs> okay uh, the style of uh, I didn't see the silence of the lambs. I'm so sorry. Uh, in the prison. Smart. Ah, oh, yeah. That guy I, I told you about that was uh, pretty smart. Because he tried to say uh, he was. Uh, they are arrogant. They are um, psychos. You can't deal with psychos. I mean, um, you hope to keep them in the prison how much it's possible to keep them so simple they trick you because they are they have a really high iq because uh, they don't like the society they were um maybe sexual abuse maybe they have a really low self-esteem do you know that Bundy like this is the same thing he tried to trick the court like I'm so smart but actually he wasn't like he was a normal guy he like he he was on the lower list on the low university if you know the story he was like okay I'm innocent or I didn't kill 36 women or something like this uh, you can't deal with these people and just think about it you don't have no you don't have you don't need to fix all the problems for the, from the system it's not necessary why do you need to fix all the problems did you see the number that I told you in the beginning of the session how many people that are coming back what is the percent 60 60 70 you know, so you don't need to fix all their problems. If they are getting out, it's a it's a problem that we don't have a solution until now. So besides focusing on that, and you are going to understand, like to to see that he tries to trick you, to try to manipulate you. Maybe you we can talk with him for a good story, for maybe a paper maybe a research maybe to see if he's going to change in the in time or something like this but he's a clinical case he can't be solved so just let him you have other 10000 prisoners in the prison that has uh, to deal with and beside it if He's going out because um, the people with clinical uh, disorders, really high risk disorder, 
Mm, they are saying the prison around between 20 and 25. This is here, just here. I don't know how it's in your country. 20, 25. They are going out on 18, after 18 years. So it's not your problems. Uh, it's police problem. You understand? You don't have to deal with uh, the people that are you. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't being specifically. You don't have the diploma of dealing with the people like this. This is a medical specialization, okay? So you are not supposed to work with them. So simple. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, you don't know if a person made the crime or not. From their opinion, uh, is the question the rare instance from the prison? Yes, it's possible. If they did it like the instance uh, made a mistake, you don't know about it. If you are listening to them, you are going to see that all are innocent. I'm innocent lady. Uh, I didn't do it. Oh, uh, it was a mistake. Uh, it's the same discussion all, all over again. So you, mm, it's not your problem. Again, it's not your diploma to deal with. Uh, maybe you can find something out. But also, don't forget about um, the, what is the main... Um, mm, I don't know how to say. What is the main uh, rule of a psychologist in a therapy session? To don't talk outside of the session. So it's confidential to not say. It's, and I will say, okay, it's the prison. You help other people. You know that the person is going to be murdered after. Yeah, in these cases, yes. But in general, you don't talk with the officers about his problems, like the prison problem, because you are going to lose the, his trust. Uh, just believe me, the gossips in the prisons, it's more worse than in a high school or in a new university or uh, showbiz, media, gossip. So you don't have to tell something like this. It's an ethical. Also, that guy, if you didn't know, can uh, make a process on you. Because you have a certain protocol that you have to respect it. So it's better to don't say or just to believe him like he was. <sighs> uh, open up about their mental health and they feel on of when listen to them. Um, uh, I forgot to tell you something. Uh, is a difference between mental health and mental illness. You know? So... Uh, it's a difference also because of our paper. Like, we are psychologists, not psychiatrists. So it's like a medical one. We have different schools, something different. So it's like, um, again, you can't control the society, how he's thinking. You can make him to accept he has a problem. And also, um, like yesterday, I will tell you, like, to be honest, yesterday... I have problems also, like, do you see it? Yes, this is my triangle personality questionnaire. So what is writing here? I'm narcissistic. I have OCD. And I'm histrionical. Before going to the prison, you have to make this kind of, uh, of test that we, all of us, we have problems. And it doesn't matter that we have um, some big problems, like we are going to be judged. Like if you are narcissistic or OCD or doesn't matter, antisocial behavior, you try to explain him like a baby, like what does it mean? Mm, I don't respect the norms. Mm, I have angry issues. Mm, I don't know, maybe um, uh, I try to manipulate people, maybe I have something, like, doesn't matter. But, like a kid, you try to explain him, like, this is not a problem, why did you do this? What was your needs? What is your approach for the future? This is really a problem, this is clinical, am I taking pills? Do I should take pills? Do you believe that I take pills? Society is going to judge me or not? Like, how is going? And you can also give him, like, 
DSM book. Like, look, this is our psychology Bible. Do you see here? It's really so big. Yeah, you are in the prison, but uh, actually it's like an environment situation that bring you here. Not the... Um, not more like this is uh, not more your mental condition you know so if you are grow up if you grow up in a family with no education with uh, i don't know you were abused your mother is dep has depression your father is a drug addict uh you are maybe you believe about yourself that you are ugly you know or you don't have money this simple. This doesn't mean that uh, doesn't mean that you have a, a mental problem that it is going to be judged. You have to normalize the thing, not to focus on to tell them or to focus on the fact that oh my God, you are not normal. You have a problem. You know, you don't have to forget it because you are going to forget a lot in the prison about it because they are really tricky and they are going to trick you and they are going to apply a lot of tricks on you and you have to manage to try to explain them that um, what they are, it's normal and mm, it's tricky. <sighs> you can't about the psychologists really understand if they are telling the truth. You can't, but um, you can work on it. I mean, you are going to uh, see a pattern in their discourse, in their talking, and uh, also you are going to talk with other prisoners. Like, I heard about that guy, he's, uh, um, I don't know, he doesn't drink, or uh, other person from the prison, they told me, hey, there are not drugs in the prison. You know, so you can't go to the officers to tell them, like, guys, there are drugs in the prison. No, 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 no. But you understand the fact that some people with drug um, problems histor uh, history, they maybe know something about it or maybe they can take something or you can focus about their discourse because you know some stuff but you don't know like they are going to be nervous they are going to uh, to say uh, to go more to your office uh, they are going to be aggressive maybe you can see their face you can talk with them like the main thing that how you know that a person is going to tell you the truth like respond more um, simple to talk with them like um, you are from their gang like um, hey tell me now or oh you didn't care about your mother okay well, what is your problem why do you tell me if you are not going to the station why you are coming here like do you want to do something or not or yeah yeah sure you did care about your mother you didn't and it's like like this this kind of discourse until you are going to that session of normal talking like yes can you tell me more about it like until that moment you are talking with them how they are they are talking with you you know because you can't like a lot of and we are going to see that maybe you find some research i didn't find because i didn't care about it because already working i didn't care about it so uh, maybe you will uh, have some evidence based that uh, it's not okay to talk like this to the prisoners. Working there, you will see that this is like how they will not percept you like a person who is high of their league, that they can't reach of you. It's like, mm, he's a normal she's a normal person she maybe she would understand me maybe she's going to understand what are my problems see and after it you are going to see if they are telling the truth or not but if they want to lie you they're going to lie you like they have secrets you have secrets like all the time really uh. mm about psychology who works with the law <laughs> in Romania yeah we don't have like mm, it's really difficult um, 
If you want to work in the system in Romania, you have to buy your own tests, you have to go to your own sessions, you have to go like I was like to deal with this. I was uh, I was in the groups with horse. You know what are horse bitches? Like I'm sorry for the language. Yeah, like a colleague, she has a research about self-esteem of the horse. And I was talking with them also, like I was in the sessions and like this, like in Romania, we uh, we are a poor country. I'm so sorry to say about it. And you have to deal with it, not even university, like my whole university, it's not um, provided um, practice, a certain practice. So I was going to just by myself, I was calling the prison system and I'm do you receive me can I apply for a job here or can I apply as a collaborator here can I apply so you are searching 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 so you are dealing with this you are thinking research you are talking with uh, teachers that are they are still young in the um, in the university so they are talking no don't ask me about Romania again sorry <laughs> really <laughs> because it's like uh, we don't have any help so um, even the prison system it's not helpful so even if I'm talking here about some serious shit really like all we are doing all the psychologists from the prison all what we are doing it's like guessing or applying that what we know from outside of we want from outside, from conference, or from our research, and we are applying, applying, applying. You know the main thing that is working in the prison, but if you don't have the money, if you don't have the ma the money for tests, or you don't have, uh, uh, as a student maybe, you don't have money for uh, going to, um, I don't know, a three years session of CBT to take your diploma. What are you doing? Nothing. So you are just uh, staying around the people uh, that can teach you something or go to volunteer programs or something like this. This is what works for us, like something or no. Ah, yes, I was assaulted. Like, um, God forbid, yeah. Yeah, it's not like sexual assaulted. I didn't, I wasn't sexual assaulted. I uh, was like um, uh, touching. I don't know how to say it. Oh my God, lady. Uh, and touching, you know, this kind of attitude and what you are, we are doing. Uh, firstly, you are not alone. Uh, it's, you are not alone there in the office, in the session you are not alone you are not doing your psychology um, session alone so you have an officer around you all the time doesn't matter that you are uh, has been assaulted like touched maybe assaulted is too much to say touched or something you have um, military preparation all the people from the prison i don't know if you know they need a military preparation Self-defense, if a guy is going to try to touch you, to push you, you have a button on your desk that is calling the high officers, what they are going to do to him, to beat him, yes, a little bit, what they are going to do it after it, to increase his punishment, yes, so usually it's not happening, it's happening if they are really, um, stupid because even if you have a um, high IQ score or even if you are a sexual assaulter usually you it's hap it's not happening to you like this because they just like the man I didn't see the woman uh, they try to make you to prove that you are low you know so it's not yes make it's possible to happen, but if you are sensitive, and I told you that um, I have issues or something like this, uh, doesn't matter, you are not alone. It's not supposed to be afraid of it because you are not going to work there anymore. So if you want to do it, you have to assume this risk and to uh, to apply for that courses of self-defense that uh, the prison has to give you, you know? 
Okay, how does Isaac help you out in the field of psychology? Uh, talking with the people, I suppose. This was the main thing, and self-organizing, and that's it. Isaac is not doesn't do something more. It's just that it's just to do like um, putting connection with the other people and talking with them, and maybe um, like you know, person who knows the person, and maybe we are doing some business together, and uh, you are psychologist from the other part of the country or to the other part of the world, and we are meet each other, and we are going to make a research together, or we are going to talk, or we are here in a session, or something like this. So this is how Isaac is working, not like a specific thing from their programs, it's just they, they connect the people. Um, insightful thing can a prison has ever shared with you? Uh, uh, I suppose the um, this kind. I I don't know how to say. Like he was talking that uh, he the biggest regret from his life. He said that he left when he left the baby all the time. It's not. Uh, it's a general thing. A general regret or something. They left the baby. Um, outside, like they have a baby, they have a family, and this kind of things. Or they didn't tell me about um, crimes, or they told me about some stuff they don't, they can't share with other people. Like uh, they are upset, or they have regrets, or something. This kind of stuff, not to uh, other things. They oh, also they they keep they keep telling me ways of making or hiding drugs i know how to hide drugs everywhere like unfortunately i know how to hide a lot of drugs if you put me in the room an empty room i know how to hide a phone i know how to rubber uh, a shop i know how to make a murder and no one to know uh, i know how to this kind of stuff, so uh, it's not uh, like something to share. <laughs> uh, now, please. Okay. I see snow. Okay, I can share my email address with you. I can put it here right now. Do you have it or I should type it here in the comment section? We have, but if you wish to, you can. Uh, I will type it. I will write it here now. <laughs> okay. This is my address. Uh, and if you need something more or, I don't know, maybe researches or if you are too lazy to find a research by yourself because Google Academic is really big, or anything that you need, you can send me an email. And it was really, 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 really nice to talk with you guys. You are Thank really you smart. So much. <laughs> you Thank are you really so smart. much, Yulania. <laughs> Thank you so much for such an insightful session. I mean, I'm sure it was so interesting that, you know, we had to stop in between. And we could see that you were tired, you know, speaking continuously. <laughs> Thank I'm you really so much, sorry. Anna. <laughs> Anna, I'm it's nice. okay. It's, it's, no, no, no. Actually, it's real difficult. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, and we, I'm very sure on behalf of Jagran Lake City University, uh, we School of Humanities and Social Sciences, thanks, uh, uh, you know, we thank you uh, for being here, for giving them such a good information. And uh, I'm sure now they all have got uh, to know something new. Uh, in terms of psychology, I mean, yes, there are few students, those who are always interested in criminal psychology and all. So I think that they are more clear now. Thank you so much. We'll have a really soon. big pleasure. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Take care.